Hello everybody. So today we're working on lesson 7.6, fraction multiplication, and we're on page 327 of the fifth grade cold math textbook. The essential question is basically, how do you multiply fractions? So Sasha has three fifths of a scarf left to knit. If she finishes half of that today, how much of the scarf will Sasha knit today? Well, how much of this scarf does Sasha have left to knit? Three fifths. And of that fraction that is left, the three fifths, how much will she finish today? She's going to finish half of that today. Okay. So one way we can solve that is to use a model like we have been doing. So we would shade three fifths. So we'd shade three fifths, and then we draw a horizontal line across the rectangle to show two equal parts. In other words, we're going to take half of this fifth of the fifths. Okay, so now we have 10 total pieces, right? We have five up here and five down here. So shade half of the yellow set, or I, I colored mine with, um, let's see, let me get it. Yeah. So shade three fifths of the model yellow. All right. So three fifths yellow. Draw a horizontal line for the halves. And now color half of the yellow sections blue. So it doesn't really matter which half. Okay. So how much do we have shaded? <clears throat> we have one, two, three. Out of how many? Five, ten pieces. So we have three tenths. Compare the numerator and denominator of the product with the numerators and denominators of the factors. Describe what you notice. Well, if I multiply the numerators together, I get the product that I have in my answer. So the numerator of the answer... is the product of the two numerators. Of the factors. Okay, so one half is one of the factors, three fifths was, is the other factor. And if we just look at the numerators, the numerator of the answer, three, is the product of the numerators of the two factors, three times one. The denominator is the same thing. So the denominator of the answer, 10, is the product of the denominators of the factors. 2 times 5, 10. So keeping that in mind, that means we can use just use paper and pencil as another way of solving these. So we can multiply those fractions without a model. So all we have to do is take the 1 half times the 3 half, fifths. We're taking half of 3 fifths. Multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together. And 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 5 is 10. So she's going to knit 3 tenths of the scarf today. <clears throat> All right, so remember you can write a whole number 
as a fraction with a denominator of 1. So when we look at this 4, we can say that that's 4 over 1. Okay. Because what's 4 divided by 1? 4. All right. So we can find 4 times 5 twelfths and write the product in simplest form by combining the numerators, 4 times 5, which would be 20, and the denominators, which are 1 times 12. And 1 times 12 is 12. Now, 20 twelfths, <clears throat> I know I can reduce that or simplify it by finding a greatest common factor for 12 and 20. Well, I know 2 would work because they're both even numbers. But I also know that 4 will work. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. Well, now we're going to want to leave the fraction as a fraction greater than 1. So we're going to go ahead and divide. How many 3's can we take from 5? 1 with a remainder of 2, so 1 and 2 thirds. So 4 times 5 twelfths is 5 thirds or 1 and 2 thirds. All right, try this one. Evaluate C times 4 fifths if C is 2 halves. <clears throat> What is another way to write the value of C? Well, right now C is two halves, right? Well, anytime the numerator and denominator are exactly the same, that has a value of one. What happens when you multiply a whole number by one? You get the other number. All right, so replace C in the expression with two halves. And so we'd have two times four times two times five, and two times four is eight, and two times five is 10. <clears throat> so multiply the numerators, we did two times four is eight, multiply the denominators, two times five is 10. What do you notice about the product? Well, 8 tenths can be reduced by 2, right? 2 is a common factor to both 8 and 10. And we get 4 fifths. Well, 4 fifths is the same as the other factor, right? So the product is the value of the fraction 4 fifths. So multiplying C times 4 fifths is equal to 4 fifths when C equals 2 halves. Well, you get the same result if you multiply 4 fifths by any fraction with a numerator and denominator that are the same digit. Let me explain. So in other words, what if we did 4 fifths times 4 fourths? Well, that's still 1, right? So anytime the numerator and the denominator are the same, we're still multiplying 4 fifths by 1. So yeah, we're still, we would always get 4, four fifths.
So if the numerator and denominator are the same, regardless of what the, the numbers are, then it's, it's equal to 1. So 4 fifths times 1, no matter what the denom numerator and denominator are, would always be 4 fifths, as long as they are the same. All right. So let's look at number 1. <clears throat> we want 6 times 3 eighths. So we have 6 sets of 3 eighths. But we can rewrite 6 as a fraction, as 6 times 1. And so we can do 6 times 3 over 1 times 8. And 6 times 3 is 18. <clears throat> and 1 times 8 is 8. I know that 2 is a factor of both of those fractions, uh, of both the numerator and denominator. 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. Well, I don't, I'm not going to leave it like that, so I'm going to take 9 fourths and divide. I can take 2 fourths from 9 with a remainder of 1. So we could say 9 fourths or 2 and 1 fourth. All right, let's look at number 2. 3 times 8 over 8 times 9. 3 times 8 is 24, and 8 times 9 is 72. Now, what are the factors of 24 and 72? Well, one factor of 24 is 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. Now, 72, I know 1 and 72. 2 has got to be a factor of 72. Half of 72 is 36. 3 will work because 7 plus 2 is 9, and 9 can be divided by 3, so 72 can be divided by 3. And 72 divided by 3 is 24. Four times 18 is 72. Five will not work because 72 doesn't end in five or zero. Six will work, six times 12. And I ran out of space, but eight times nine also works. <clears throat> and I see that 24 is the greatest common factor. So let's simplify by 24. 24 divided by 24 is one, and 72 divided by 24 is three, so one third. So 24 70 seconds or one third. Two thirds times 27. We can rewrite that as 27 over one. And two times 27 is 54. And three times one is three. 54 divided by three. Three times what is 24? Eight. So 54 thirds or 18. Number four, five twelfths times three fifths. Five times three is 15, and five times 12 is 60. <clears throat> Well, I know 5 is a factor of 15, and I know 5 is also a factor of 60, because any number that ends in 5 or 0 has 5 as a factor. So we can reduce by 5. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. <clears throat> and 60 divided by 5 is 12. 5 times 12 is 60. But now I notice that I get to also divide 3 and 12 by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 
So I actually could have reduced by a factor of 15, right? So our answer is 15 sixtieths or one fourth. Number five, one half times three fifths. So combine the numerators, combine the denominators by multiplying, and we get three tenths. Three tenths is in simplest form because three is a prime number and three is not a factor of ten. Two thirds times four fifths. Multiply the numerators. Four times two is eight, and three times five is fifteen. The only factors of fifteen are one, three, five, and fifteen. The only common factor would be one, and that doesn't change anything. So eight fifteenths is in simplest form. One third times five eighths. One times five. Three times eight. 5 24ths. 5 is prime and is not a factor of 24. Number 8, <clears throat> rewrite 4 as 4 over 1 times 1 fifths. 4 times 1 is 4. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 is prime, not a factor of 4. And 4 is not a factor of 5. So 4 fifths. Okay, number nine. Find the product and write the product in simplest form. We want two times one eighth. Well, we can write that as two over one times one eighth. Two times one is two. Eight times one is eight. I know I can reduce two and the eight by dividing by two. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So 2 eighths or 1 fourth. 4 ninths times 4 fifths. Multiply the numerators. 4 times 4 is 16. 9 times 5, 45. Factors of 16 are 1 and 16. 2 and 8, and 4 and 4. And none of those are factors of 45. So 16 45ths for number 10. 1 12 times 2 thirds. Multiply the numerators, 1 times 2. Multiply the denominators, 12 times 3. We get 2 36 I can reduce by a factor of 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and half of 36 is 18. So 2 36 or 1 18. 1 7 times 30. So we know we're going to write 1 7. The numerator of this is 30, and the denominator is 1, 30 over 1. 30 times 1 is 30, 7 times 1 is 7. <clears throat> Take 30 and divide by 7. That would leave me with a remainder of 2. So 4 and 2 sevenths. Remember the denominator. I'm sorry. The remainder is the numerator of the fraction. And the divisor, 7, is the denominator of the fraction. The 4 is the quotient. The quotient is the whole number of the is of the mixed number. So we have 30 sevenths or 4 and 2 sevenths. 13, 2 fifths times 4 sevenths. 2 times 4 is 8, 7 times 5 is 35. The only factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. <clears throat> None of those are factors of 35 other than one, and one doesn't change anything. Seven times four, eight times five, 28 40 ifs. Well, we can reduce that one by a factor of at least four. So 28 divided by four, 40 divided by four, four 28 divided by four is seven, 
40 divided by 4 is 10. So 28 fortieths or 7 tenths. 2 thirds times 8 eighths. 2 times 8, 3 times 8. So we get 16 twenty fourths. We can reduce 16 twenty fourths by a factor of 8. Because 8 times 2 is 16 and 8 times 3 is 24. Gives us an answer of 2 thirds. So 16 twenty fourths or 2 thirds. 16, we can write 5 as 5 over 1. So 5 times 4, 1 times 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 1 times 5 is 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. All right, 5 times 4 is 20. All right, 17. <clears throat> of the pets in the pet show, 5 sixths are cats. Four-fifths of those cats are calico. What fraction of the pets are calico? So we have five-sixths. We're going to multiply that by four-fifths. So multiply four times five and five times six. And we get 20 thirtieths. We know that we can divide by ten because they both end in zeros. And so we get two thirds. So 20 thirtieths or two thirds are calico cats. Number 18, five cats each ate one fourth cup of canned food and one fourth of cup of dried food. How much food did they eat all together? <clears throat> Well, it doesn't tell us um, to differentiate between canned food and dry food. It just wants to know how much food they ate together. So I can add the cups of food that they ate together, which one-fourth plus one-fourth is two-fourths, or one-half, right? So five cats times two-fourths. Well, we know we can write five as five over one. So 5 times 2 is 10, and 1 times 4 is 4. Divide 10 by 4. We'd have a remainder of 2, so 2 and 2 fourths. Or 2 and 1 half cups of food. <clears throat> I didn't show the division for two fourths because I, I recognize that two is half of four, so two half, two and a half. All right, number nineteen. Speed skating is a popular sport in the Winter Olympics. Many young athletes in the U.S. participate in speed skating clubs and camps. At a camp in Green Bay, Wisconsin, seven ninths of the participants were from Wisconsin. Of that group, three fifths were 12 year olds. What fraction of the group from Wisconsin was from Wisconsin and 12 years old? So we have seven ninths of the people at this camp are from Wisconsin. And of that group, three fifths are 12 years old. So, Combine the numerators, 3 times 7. Combine the denominators, 5 times 9. 3 times 7 is 21, and 5 times 9 is 45. Well, I see that 2 plus 1 is 3, so 3 is a factor of 21, also by basic math facts, and 3 is also a factor of 45. So let's reduce by 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 45 divided by 3 is 15. So 21 40 fifths or 7 fifteenths are from Wisconsin and 12 years old. Almost half, right? Almost half of the people at the camp are 12 years old and from Wisconsin.
Maribel wants to skate at one and a half miles on Monday. If she skates nine tenths mile on Monday morning and two thirds of that distance Monday afternoon, will she reach her goal and explain? All right, so she wants to skate one and a half miles. That's her goal. She skates nine tenths of that on Monday and two thirds of that distance on Monday. So let's do <clears throat> two thirds of nine tenths. Okay, because she's taking two thirds of the nine tenths on Monday afternoon. And two times nine and three times ten, that would give us 18 thirtieths. We can reduce the 18 thirtieths by three at least by three. Actually, we can reduce it by six, right? 18 divided by six is three, and 30 divided by six is five. So three-fifths of that was in the afternoon, plus the nine-tenths in the morning. Okay, so this is the morning amount, and this is the afternoon. Two-thirds of what she did in the morning is three-fifths. So in her afternoon skate, she went three-fifths of a mile. In the morning, she went nine-tenths of a mile. So now we have to combine these two. Well, we can't add them right now because they have different denominators. So I'm going to multiply five by two and get six-tenths. In other words, I'm doubling the three-fifths to six-tenths plus nine-tenths. Six plus nine is 15 over 10. We can reduce both of those numerator and denominators by five, and we get three halves. Three divided by two is one, so we get one and a half. So yes, she would reach her goal. So if we take three fifths of nine tenths, we get three. I'm sorry. If you take two thirds of nine tenths, you will get three fifths. If you add the three fifths and the nine tenths, the morning session and the afternoon session, you'll get 15 tenths. And that equals one and a half miles. All right, 21. On the first day of camp, five six of the skaters were beginners. Of the beginners, one third were girls. What fraction of the skaters were girls and beginners? Well, we have five six total. And of that, one third were girls. So let's combine the numerators, combine the denominators by multiplying. Five times one is five. And 6 times 3 is 18. So 5 eighteenths of the skaters were beginners and girls. Explain how your answer is reasonable. Well, I know that if I take a fraction of 5, 6, the answer has to be less than 5 sixths. Five six can be rewritten 
as 15 eighteenths. So 5 eighteenths is less than 15 eighteenths. So the answer is reasonable. A scientist had three-fifths of a solution. He used one-sixth of the solution for an experiment. How much solution did the scientist use for the experiment? Use the numbers on the tiles to complete the calculations. You may use the numbers more than once or not at all. All right, well, the first box, that's just basically multiplying the numerators and the denominators together, right? So three times one, five times six. Three times one is three. And five times six is 30. I can reduce three and 30 by a factor of three. Three divided by three is one, and 30 divided by three is 10, because three times 10 is 30. So the scientists used one tenth liter. Okay. All right, so that's it for how to multiply fractions. And in our next lesson, we'll work on doing area and mixed numbers. So until then, I will see you soon.